Everybody and welcome to Hey Man. Your out I'm your Josh. Teeth like that. That's weird. I'm Jacob. That camera. Yeah, the camera. And this is our, our guest, Jason Ellis, today. Hey, Jason. Now listen, I start this podcast by giving people their flowers. I think it's really important. Like, I don't know why we wait till everybody is dead. Before yeah. You're like, this is what I think about this dude. Yeah, they can't hear that. I have, and I told you a little bit about this yesterday on your podcast. Yeah. I have an immense amount of respect for you for a couple of different reasons. First, the first thing that I always that I latched onto, I was like, oh, when this dude goes in, he's he goes 100 yeah. percent There's zero 80 percent on yep. on you. I have a ton of respect for that because it's something in my life at times that I struggled with. But to see somebody just go, I'm doing it, and just put go with the gas, so much respect. Thank you. With that bravery, dude, you you publicly went through something over the last Year, two years, two years year yeah. and a half, yep. Yeah. That, man, to me, I know you told me yesterday that some people were like, that's not a good look. To me, yeah. I'm like, this is the bravest move for this guy to make of who people thought he was yeah, and who he's showing himself to be right now. It's not the first time, so. But dude, what a crazy way to quickly humble yourself and and almost wasn't that quick t- uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you personally tore yourself down to build yourself back yeah. up which most people don't have the balls to do dude they don't have the balls to go inside like that and light the match and come back and right. so i have a an immense amount of respect for you dude i'm so happy that you're here today thank you man yeah absolutely absolutely it means a lot coming from you um and with that Let's tell some dick jokes. No. Uh, I mean, yes, but like, <laughs> not, all the, not, not the whole entire podcast. No, no, yeah. There'll be some other stuff, but there'll probably be some dick jokes. By the way, thanks for wearing your short pants today. Those are so short. I can't even, I had, I just looked way, over. I've, I've been wearing these for the last five hours. You just now said something? Yeah, but I guess I just really looked over. They ride up kind of good. Yeah. 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 Short shorts are the shit. They oh, are yeah. now. Yeah. I felt, I, I felt, I felt, you can't wear shorts, period. Don't yes, you're right. Yeah. You got a shorts problem. Well, he's got you a don't le- like your legs. He's got a leg problem. I don't have a leg. Legs? No, I don't skip leg day. Then he doesn't. What's, then what's what's your what are you ducking? I'll show you. Uh, you want to see? Just want to warn you. You may yeah, go. What, with- is, what is it? Okay, everybody ready? Yep. Okay, they're just a bad. little pale. Oh dang! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're just a little more pale than. By the most- way, not pale. They're wow. practically <laughs> translucent. Are they, are they- why are they so hairless? Hey, too? listen, you're not making it better, dude. <laughs> you, got no, a, they, you got the leg of a dead Asian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, oh, sorry. Is, <laughs> by the way, the first time we've heard that one, it's a dead Asian. Might be my, my might be my new favorite one, actually. <laughs> that is so funny. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I didn't mean that. <laughs> well, listen, Woo! you're not wrong. No, you're not. That's why I love that. Like it's, that, even it's the first time we've ever heard that one. When, when so when we go, <laughs> the first time I've said it, I've never seen a leg quite like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least we know you've never seen a dead Asian before. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, his his legs are like translucent. That's why yeah, it's right? yeah, it's yeah. like picture that on the beach with the sun reflecting yeah, off the sand and then reflecting thin. off of that. I walk why around, you put it out there uh, because at this point you I don't know how I don't know how they're gonna react to the yeah, sun. Right, you know, it's been right. so long. Oh, there'd be an initial b- blast for sure. Yeah, yeah it would oh, be a rough situation. Yeah. Oh, dude, I think. I think you'd be like one of those English people who gets burned up at Disneyland and they yeah. end up with like bubbles on their skin. Yeah, really. I think that's your what your legs would be like. Catch on fire like a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It really is. It's like if you pulled a fish from the bottom of the ocean, <laughs> like you'd be like, that looks like Josh Wolf's leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, would, uh, I would imagine if a merman like turned into a real man, his leg would be that color. <laughs> it's weird that your legs almost kind of match the color of your sock, except there's green on them, but like yeah. it's pretty close. Here's, yeah. here's the thing. I don't even consider my legs white. They're like a light blue. Yeah, there's something yeah. else. Yeah. yeah. There's a little they're extra see-through. In Like there. they're dead. That's right. Yeah. Like they haven't seen oxygen. Zero yeah, blood flow bit. in yeah. the last 40 years of your life. 
I pretty will, cool they work. They do. They yeah, do. right? <laughs> it's like a weird illusion. How'd you get here, man? Yeah. I, I float. <laughs> the, the, I think I drove us. It's so pale. Okay, it's so pale. This is how pale it is. So Beth saw me, obviously. I was walking around naked in the bathroom. And um, she said, oh, you, your chest looks tan. I go, it's not. And she goes, but it's so much tanner than your legs. Yeah. I go, well, that's because my chest saw the sun last year. Yeah. My legs haven't seen the sun. Since so Woodstock. Yeah, I'm like Gollum. I yeah, had that like with they're, my, they're, 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 it's the precious. My ass had that for the longest time because I was like skateboarding was like big clothes in the 90s. And I just never wore anything that wasn't shorts that went to the knees. And I had a stripper girlfriend. I lived in Huntington Beach. It was when I first started getting paid. So I had my own apartment. And it was her and a stripper friend. Where she was staying with us. So I had two girls there. And they're like, we're going to the tanning bed. You want to come? And I was like, tanning bed? What's that all about? They're like, just come. You'll have fun. And I was like, okay. Like, you, we get naked. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go. And they go, put the, put the tanning bed lotion on i was like yeah all right hell yeah and i put it all over me and get in the thing with the glasses on and my you know we were hanging out you good jason yeah i'm good like hell yeah and then we get out how was it i'm like i don't know he's lie there who cares <laughs> and then a few hours later everything else is kind of tan yeah but my butt was not prepared for that <laughs> and i had grill mark scars for oh. like months yeah my ass looked like like burger king patty like a whopper <gasps> straight Dude, up just like wop, 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 like the, yeah. the lights. it was just straight up have it your way that was unfortunate it um, didn't heal for a long time yeah. you Oof. had like you had just basically a jail cell jail cell yeah yeah it was kind of cool i mean kinda, maybe you get did yeah. you ever thought about tatting it on there no nah, well now i they're all tattooed tattooed on your ass everywhere no gaps by the way, I f it felt like a question I didn't have to ask. I kind of just made an assumption. Assumed it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's just like you're, he's covered head to toe. Like, I have a butthole tattooed. That one I didn't Come expect. On. Yeah. I like what, how she's nodding in the background. Yeah, okay. That's uh, what. What is what? Oh, let me take a couple guesses on the butthole tattoo. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Okay, what's that famous? No. Okay, it, uh, <laughs> is it is it an inside is it an inside joke? Is it such something Wait, like you know the, that inside? You know the painting. <laughs> <laughs> you know the painting of the. the yeah. Oh, that's thought, super funny, that a, man! I should have done that. That would have yeah. been a good one with all. Yeah. And yet, um, okay, that's pretty funny, actually. Okay. What if it was like? What if it was like it's this? Not, it's not a. It's not a picture of a thing. Like it's. <laughs> oh, it's, it's not. not. It's not like <laughs> an eagle or you know, or Was a, it a starfish? Mustang. What? Is it a starfish? No, nah, but it's close. But the if it was a picture of a thing that had a mouth, <laughs> I don't. I don't want to judge. You know what I mean? I it's so. It's so. It'd be I like, like a being funny, but not when I'm showing my butthole. Oh. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly do -do when I like it. The, yeah. <laughs> Is wanna... it like a check mark? Is it yeah. like an X marks the spot? Okay, can I say it now? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's spider webs. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, they kind of look spiderwebby anyways. I, want, I went to a place to get spiderweb over my, the rest of, because I got like a, a Baphomet on one cheek and then I got a, a, a Viking ship on the other. And then there's gaps like from there into the crack. And I was like, I'll get spiderwebs to fill the gaps into the crack. And I got a guy to do it where he was like, you know, I ain't going to the hole, homie kind of guy. You know what yeah. I mean? And I was like, man, that's the whole point. I'm here. Yeah. He was like, I'll go close to the hole. And I was like, okay. So he did like close to the hole, but then I still got gaps. And to me, it's like OCD or something. I'm like, yeah. I got a gap. I got to fill it. Nobody, none of my tattoo buddies want to tattoo my butthole. I'm like, fair enough. Like, I it's get a, it. By the way, yeah. I feel like way, you should make a t-shirt that says that. Yeah. So then I had to get a guy on Grindr. Because I was still gay back then, and oh, bye, whatever, and and I was like, I'll get a, a tat. There was a you know, I mean, a guy that had good tattoos, mm -hmm. and he was gay, and he was like, yeah, I'll tattoo your butthole. I ain't scared of it. And I'm like, and then some. So how does it how does it tattoo compared to the rest of the body? Seems well, the, like it would hurt. My ex wife tattooed a love heart around my actual hole, uh -huh. like stick and poke. That was oh, pretty painful. The stick and poke sounds. The stick and poke's like tedious. Takes a long time. Right. And that was not that cool. But then I wanted a spider web that went all the way to the heart. So this guy did the spider web all the way to the heart. 
And so what's the most painful place on the Top body? of my head, easily. Yeah, that's what I was giving yeah, my 10 guess. Times. And he's a heavy he's a heavy handed guy. I didn't know back then. I was still I was still a little bit more I just took pain better when I was younger and and it was bleeding a lot. And I know more about tattooing now. Like if you bleed, then the guy's like unnecessarily being heavy handed. Uh -huh. But it's old school. That's like more of a traditional way to get tattooed is no numbing cream and the guy's heavy handed. It stays in forever that way. They all stay in jerk off. Yeah. But, but exactly. those are the old school mentality. So when he did it, it was bleeding everywhere. Just just this bit. Cause here, like, it's just there's no, there's just skin and yeah. bone, so it was just so bad. All this bit was so bad. This bit, I was like watching fights and playing video games. This bit, I was holding onto the chair. Would take how like, long that would take? The whole thing, sixteen hours. But this top bit was probably like five, six. Golly. I wonder why the top is so much more painful than the side. I don't know. M nerve endings. I'm yeah. assuming there's more nerve endings in the top of your head than the side. I can't tell you the science behind it. I can just tell you, ow, not so bad. Yeah. By the way, that's the uh, kind of science I understand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. My if you whole, had gone into some technical yeah. shit, I'd have been like, go yeah. to the ow, not so bad. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. You said nerve endings and I checked out and then you were like, ouch, meh. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's cool. That's what happened. Yeah. Dude. That's crazy. You grew up where in Australia? Melbourne, Australia. It, during what, like what years? Uh, well, I was 71, I was born. So, you know, my childhood was, you know, I moved here like 89, yeah. I think. So, you know, uh, early 80s was kind of where it was happening. You grew up in the city, like in the proper? <clears throat> I grew up in the city, like suburbs. And my father was a, a big uh, outdoor guy, like camping, uh, shooting, hunting, that kind of stuff. So, the, you know the movie Deliverance? Oh, yeah. You probably uh, don't. I know of it. I know the title. I don't think I've ever seen it. Watching it now or, you know, recent, not, you know, in the last couple of decades, super apparent that my dad was heavily influenced by Deliverance and he thought that he was uh, Burt Reynolds mm. and so did all his friends. So, it was all about uh, camping by the river, canoeing down rivers and shooting anything that moved. And I had a friend, my dad's friend was a Czechoslovakian guy because that was before it was Czech Republic. And he escaped from Czech prison. And like I built a house with him at one point with another friend of mine. And we were probably 15, 16, building a house with him. And uh, we were talking about, you, you went to jail, Jeff, right? And he was like, yeah. And he's like, it's not so bad. I'm like, yeah. He's like, yeah. I, you know, I didn't, I didn't get buff fuck. I just had to suck a dick. And I, and and my friend and I were, were were hammering. And it was like I froze. It was like I don't even. I can't even look at my friend. And he couldn't look at me. We both just went. Just keep hammering. Just keep hammering. Pretend he didn't say that. It was the most shock. Like I was like, this guy's. He got a tattoo that he didn't like, and he rubbed it off with sandpaper and acid. No. Yeah. And he's like, I couldn't. It's By hurt. himself? So I only, yeah. I only got halfway through it. He was one of the toughest people I've ever met in my life. Like, I've never seen anybody That's take crazy. pain and just, ah, you know, have a shot of whiskey. You'll be all right. Like, and it was just, that was how I was raised, where these people just wouldn't acknowledge pain. You started with sandpaper, and I was like, that's where it ends. And then you said acid, and I was like, there's yeah. no way this gets worse than that. Like, well, at least he did say that it got so painful that he couldn't finish it. So there was oh, like a little God. piece left on it, and I was like, I still yeah, can't believe pussy, it. right? Yeah, who are you? Uh, who are you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That is what, crazy. What, so you raised kids here, grew up there. What do you, like, <laughs> what are the, what's one of some of the big differences between- Between be, them between, and me? Well, between, first of all, between how kids are raised, like what they're- uh, in Australia or here? Well, I don't want to, I can't generalize because in Australia, there are parents that do raise their children yeah. correctly. But I came from a, a parent, a parent, my father was 19 and my mother was 15 when they got pregnant and it was an accident. You have brothers and sisters? Yeah, half brothers. So my, my mum had me when she was 16. My dad was looking at cars while I was being born because that was a different time back then. <laughs> yeah, and that's crazy. He, it wasn't inappropriate to. No. He's like, "Well, I, you don't need me around here. That's, you know, it's your vagina, you know. I'll come back when you tell me if it's a boy or a girl." Yeah. So, 
they broke up pretty quick. He cheated on my mum with her best friend, and then they got married and had kids. So my mum doesn't like my stepmom, and I I understand. I think at this point I'm like, you should let it go, mum, and she's yeah. like, no. Nah. Mm. I'm like, okay, like it's your life, whatever it is. But then my father, he was broke back then, and there was like a lot of it was bad. It was like ghetto vibe. We lived in St Kilda and. Uh, when she first got divorced, like she used to tell me, I don't remember this, but it was like, apparently she would buy a meat pie from the, from the milk bar, which is like Seven Eleven in Australia. Cause they didn't have Seven Elevens yet. That's how old I am. And she, I would Bummer. eat the meat and she would eat the pastry on the outside. And I was like, that sounds really poor, but I don't remember that. Uh, they, there was a little bit of an error there where we didn't, it was just more like we didn't have anything, but they always had drugs and alcohol. So I never felt like we were deprived. Like you, everyone had plenty to drink. Yeah, there was never anybody hungry. Because I've got friends. It's like you ever had uh, water in your cereal? And I was like, Nah, nah. I got milk. And they were like, Yeah. So you don't know what it's like to be poor. And I'm Isn't like, Yep. Crazy? No, you win for sure. Yeah. It was a real eye, eye opener when I, someone told me that. I'll tell you something. You know, and, and it's but it's a testament, kind of, because when when these guys, when I was raising these guys for a couple of years by myself. It was a one meal a day situation for me. Yeah. And they had three, but they were three small meals, but yeah. they never knew we were poor. Right. Because you didn't bitch about it. Well, what's the... Yeah. What's... what's yeah, if they don't know and they don't see somebody else. Like I, the first time I had a friend that was rich and I went to his house, mm -hmm. he had cans of Coke in the fridge and I, I won't forget it. I was like, wait. Who's are those? <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Who's are those cogs? <laughs> He's like, ours. What? Just you have them whenever you want. They're in there. It's cold, ready to go. Yeah. And I was like, who the fuck are you, man? Yeah. Couldn't I, believe it. My, my first one is, uh, uh, I think you always said this too, like back in your day, when you went, went over to a friend's house and in the garage, they had a whole separate second fridge filled with drinks. Oh, just drinks. That's shit. That, yeah. That's when I, that's I, remember, I remember that happened to me when like, I was a kid. I was like, I was like, wait, you have just a drink fridge and a pool? Yeah. What the fuck is going on Crazy. in this house? Like, your pool isn't used by everybody else right. who lives where you live? Yeah, like, it makes, it's just yours? Did you have to work? Early on, did you like how when you were young did you work or were you nah. were you free to roam? Yeah, just wild. I was I was allowed to do well. See, I had two. I had, my parents were divorced, so I had my mom who was an alcoholic. She went out with a couple of junkies, so I, I you know I watched like I had some really bad stuff happen to me, like some boyfriends and some people did some stuff to me. My father did some stuff to me. It was like a a, a bad run, but. I, you know, I saw watch a guy shoot up in the living room, my mom crying, and you know. How I mean? old are you? How old are you when you see this? Uh, I was probably like five or six when I saw him shoot up. Holy shit! And then when I was ten, that guy got back into our lives and was at a party with my mother, and I was getting tired, so she wanted to leave the party, and I was in another room, and he came in and said, uh, uh. I want to get, I can give you something that'll like wake you up so you don't have to leave, but don't tell your mum. And I knew that it was meth because I was already, I'd already been around drugs by the time I was 10. And I was like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want that. And then I told my mum, and then there was this big fight and he got kicked out of the party. And my father was looking for him for a while. Yeah. Because he was, yeah. He was like, you know, but those were, those were the things that were, like when I became a parent, I went back to Australia and I was walking in a mall with my mother. And I was like, remember when that guy tried to give me meth at a party? And she was like, he was he was in a bad place. And I was like, that, that, mom, that is, that is not what I am looking for right now. Like, I'm like in my 30s. Seriously? Like he you're supposed to condemn him, not yeah, have yeah. his back. Yeah. That, yeah. That, went, that I went dark on her for a couple of years after that. Yeah, that's a tough response. Yeah. And I just looked at it, it was it wasn't there. What? It just it's a bad place. And I was like, it's your son. Yeah. I was like, 10. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. What what did you killed me. What did you start doing to like escape that? Is that when you started getting to skateboards and shit like that? Uh, when did I get into skateboarding? I mean, to me, I was always a daydreamer. Like I would, I would 
just sit in places by my, I was always by myself a lot. They were uh, drinking or doing stuff. So I was always by myself. So I would fantasize about a better life and like things that like be a rock star, be like Rocky, you know what I mean? Be a fighter or um, just be something special, you know, like yeah. and daydream about it. And I could, I was real good at it. Like I could really play that movie like it was real to the point where like if someone said something, I wasn't there. They'd be like, hey. And I'd be like, what? Like, and you could be standing right in front of me talking to me. I just couldn't hear it because I could re that's like a thing that I use to be good at stuff. Like if I can't do comedy, I do comedy in my head. If I can't skate, I do that trick in my head all day. Like I've done it. I don't do it driving anymore because I will drive off the road. Wait. So when you visualize, you actually can see that since you've been young, you've been able to see yeah. that stuff. Hell yeah. I, it's so crazy. You know awesome. what I was telling, was I telling you? So I've been trying to get into visualization. And when I think of myself, I can only see, it's like I'm behind me. Yeah. yeah Wait, I, so you see you. I see me. Right. I see me from behind me. I see out my eyes. That is so Whoa. bananas. I have to do a trick tomorrow with Tony Hawk at this ramp that's not, it's not a ramp that I'm used to riding where it's it's pretty it's really cool there's this ramp called the animal chin ramp from back in the day when i was a little kid okay. the bones brigade had a video called animal chin and they the movie ends where they find animal chin's ramp and it was this ramp in the 80s that had a, two, a spine like a vert ramp there was two ramps attached to oh, each that other met, like met together with little ramps on the deck and like this little hot like it was a ramp back then that was the only vert ramp that was ever existing in the planet was a u-shaped ramp that was it but the bones brigade they made a special ramp for this video and it was the the four big heavy heavy hitters mike mcgill steve caballero lance mountain and tony hawk skated this chin ramp that's the end of the video and it's like if you're a skate you were like what the f this what there's a ramp on top of the ramp wait there, there, there's a tunnel get there's a tunnel get the like and there's just everything in this Whoa. video was it was life changing for me the animal chin video that's crazy they made a replica recently and it's at camp woodward mm -hmm. and the those guys went there and they did this trick in the in the 80s where they all did a hand play all four of them two on one side two on the other where all of them are doing handstands next to each other on the spine it's like an iconic thing if you're a skateboarder from the 80s right tony's like you and I should go there and do double hand plants for the podcast. And I'm like, to Tony, who cares? You've already done it. You you did they did a re a re one where they all the old guys went there and did it. That's legendary. I'm I had nothing to do with it. I, I idolize all these guys yeah. and now I'm gonna get to do it with the great Tony Hawk. And I haven't been doing hand plants for a long time. So today I was like, I'm going to the ramp. I'm doing two shows with Tony today, but we're also going to skate for 45 minutes. I've got to get my hand plants back so that when we shoot this photo tomorrow, I don't fuck up the photo shoot. Also, yeah. the guy that took the photo in the 80s, he's taking the photo. This is so yeah, cool. So, that's so crazy. to me, like he's like, what are we doing this for? And I'm like, for my living room? Yeah, because yeah. I don't really care yeah. about what you guys are going to do. I just yeah. know that I have like hit gold right here. Like I'm, I'm so pumped to be a part of it. So all week, whenever I have time, I do hand plants in my head. So and when I went there today, how'd it go? I did, I did a bunch of hand plants. Fuck yeah, has I it helped your did, comedy? I already did a thousand of them in the last five days. Has it helped your comedy? Oh yeah, especially in LA, where now that I know people and i know where open mics are yeah so i get to do open mics i get to like be slightly regular right. but at one point it was like you know somebody who's a friend who's a proper comedian go hey man you want to do a show with me at the comedy store and i'm like yeah and then i do one show and then i don't do a show ever again <laughs> and, then, and i'm like oh uh, i'm at the comedy store and they're like good for you kid and i'm like okay good for me <laughs> You want you want you want to go up on a Monday? Yeah. Oh man, too bad. Okay. And, and I just go. Okay, cool. One day. Yeah. One day. I'm freaking fourteen at the comedy store every day. Hello, hello, Bobby Lee. Hey man, good luck, kid. I'm like, thank you. It's just, that's my all day, dude. Yeah, all that day. kind of energy. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, I went there last night and hung out with Bobby Lee, Tom Segura, Whitney Cummings, because she invited me because I'm her friend. And then I got I got um, another pro skateboarder there, uh, 
uh, P Rod, Paul Rodriguez. P Rod was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, he knows. Fuck. And P Rod's like, "You going up tonight?" I'm like, "Yeah, <sighs> not here, but I'm going up." <laughs> <laughs> and he, and he goes, "Where are you going?" I'm like. Dude, I'm like on my way and there's a, these contests that used to happen called castle contests and mm-hmm. they're like amateur contests. You do good in them, you can turn pro. And he's like, so you're like castle contests of comedy. And I'm like, yes, exactly. I'm going to a castle contest right now. And then that's, in the valley. that's my life. No, I went, dude, this is the best part. I, I'm hanging out in the green room. I'm with Bobby Lee, all the big comics. They all know me, took some photos. I leave while they're doing comedy. I drive to an alleyway. Where's the where's there's a where there's a place, uh, something chaos. Anyway, I go into the alleyway where I know, and you can only get in from the alleyway. There's 15 people in there, and it's the guy that's letting me do open mic. He's like Alice. I'm like, hey man, cool. And I sit down, and then uh, a girl comes up to do stand up, and she's not doing stand up. She's doing two rap songs. Nice. And oh. she's like, this next song's called Two Flames. You know I mean? It's like it's, I sometimes I don't believe in two flames anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because I got burned. But this is a song anyway. So put your hands up, y'all. Put your hands up. And she sucks, and and she does these two dog shit songs. And then a guy, he's like, hey, "Yo, man, you ready?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And I'm up. So it's like she just finished her songs of two flames, and then I go up and go, you know, you know. If you're a mermaid and you suck off a merman, like, and you burp, is that like, does that taste like fish oil? Like, I, and I, I'm just trying to new yeah. shit, and that dude, that's my five minutes. I want to like, tell you something. That's how you get funny, though. Yeah, uh, you ask some of these people who like the sets they would get at the comedy store Wednesday one a.m. in front of five people. Right. When you make those five people laugh, you're funny. Yeah. yeah. Those are the sets where you're like, they're you think they're ruined? Yeah. Where you somehow still get them? Those are the ones. Well, I've been in the trenches in another thing. Yes. So I know that I I, I don't want a free run because I know what happens to those people. Mm-hmm. I want it hard because I, I did it hard in skateboarding. And then in the end, because I paid my dues and because I went through bad stuff that a lot of people quit from and I thrived on, I became like top three in the world at that shit. And I was never a talented athlete, dude. I just had drive and I wouldn't back down. And I'm like, this is a thing where you're more talented at this than you were at skateboarding. Because when you started, there was something there. I'm not egotistical about it. I mm-hmm. just know that I have a little, I have a gift. If I work it, I can mold it into something. So here comes the the long road of like, pfft, Nobody cares, dickhead. Like, get lucky if you even get a spot. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm I'm expecting that. But so you it's kn- not tough but, to me. I mean, yeah. it is tough. But did I, I not say mean. to myself yeah. when it was like, "Come on, everybody, two flames"? I was like, "You were just at the comedy store." <laughs> yeah. Whitney personally yeah. invited you, and good luck. Here you go. You know what I mean? I was like, okay, this is this is a bit of a kick in the dick, but I like but it. You need it. Yes, yeah. yes. You you absolutely need it. But let me tell you something, dude. You're right. What you have is you are you have a different life than anybody I've ever met and a different point of view, which means you're going to be telling jokes nobody else is yes. going to be telling. That's the thing that I have noticed from watching so much stand up is a lot of guys you it's so much harder for you to write a joke if you've lived a pretty stock life. It's like I'm just a white guy. Who's like, you, know, you ever notice at Starbucks? And I'm like, man, to make a new one about you ever had been at Starbucks is really hard because everybody's got one. But I'm like, you know, have, have you ever done crystal meth in Mexico with a trans hooker? Like, yeah. Like, Whoa, you suck a dick. Well, I have sucked a dick. So I got a story <laughs> <Yeah>. about that. <laughs> so, it's like, nobody wants to tell that. I'm like, yeah, I understand yeah. why. Trust me. <laughs> but, dude, it makes you so different. Yeah. If I figure out what you have, have where you like you can make any story a funny story i've got that's the, the, the background the back, i just need that yeah reps yeah exactly. it's all reps dude well when you because we were talking a little bit yesterday the way your kids have been their upbringing and your upbringing yeah so completely different but i've heard this from people who had brutal upbringings that it taught them something in life that they didn't know that they would have been taught otherwise. Do you feel like you were like, I did learn 
whatever not saying it, that it was a good thing but like there was there a skill set where you're like i am this because uh, i had a sh shitty or i endured or well i think with time yeah that's, if you're yeah. lucky and you get to live long enough because that's the problem is if you have a really rough upbringing it's hard to want to stay here man mm -hmm. like you want to do things that either kill you or straight up knock yourself off you have that tendency like i'm like what's what's the point you know like nobody cares you know like and people that's why i talk about the buy stuff because you can think you're all alone and people are like oh you're fucking fag and it's yeah. like well if i am i'm no good to anybody like why would i even be here anymore you know yeah and from being older and wiser and going through it and seeing other people face these things and go through tougher shit than me man like i'm not I'm like, I used to think, man, I've seen some shit. I know some people that have got stories where I go, oh my God, mm -hmm. and you're thriving, mm -hmm. which made me know. I tell the story, Jason, because there's someone out there that's living like a life that's like yours. And if you can be like, I'm happy right now, man, I got a car, I got a life, my kids are on fire, like everything's great, then they know that they can do it. It's like proof. So I feel like there was a time there where I met a lot of people that were tough. Like I, my, my father's friends were tough people, violent people. And, and I, ha I carry that with me. Like I have like violent people like are attracted to me. Like, you know, like if you just got out of check, there used to be times where if, like at a party, I'm talking to the tattoo guy that just got out of prison. Cause me and him get it. You know what I mean? And I'm like, I don't get it. I'm not, Yeah. I just, my dad got it. You know what I mean? Like I'm not that violent. And then, seeing getting older and understanding why people react to those things that's something happened in their childhood but to be like to accept it and know that it's like you're not that tough nobody's that tough you're scared mm -hmm. and that's why you're puffed up like that like there was you know from therapy having money getting radio show having the money for a therapist that was a good therapist that made me realize that like this is a smoke show like this whole tattoo acting tough i'm a fighter it's because I'm a terrified little child and I made this to protect that little child. Like no one's going to get to him ever again because you heard him mm -hmm. and he's scared for someone that someone's going to do it again. So next time someone tries to do something to me, to that five-year-old child, this guy is going to fuck him up. So that's what I built. And then when I realized that, then I realized I don't need to be tough. I don't need to be scary. I don't need to be mad. Mm -hmm. But there's like instincts where I still have that. Like you push me or you cut, fuck you pussy. I'm like, what, dude? And then I go, Jason? <laughs> <laughs> no, not necessary anymore. Remember, you've won. It's okay. And then I go, yeah, maybe I am a pussy. Good for you. But dude, that attitude, that's what I was telling you yesterday, <clears throat> how your energy just walking into a room is so different than it used to be. That, that was... dude you described is the person I met on Sirius. Yeah. When it was combative, right when you, but I didn't know it. There was there was an instance. It's so when you brought that up, it really slapped me in the face, dude. Because I've been working so hard on myself, and I really just even in the last couple of months, I've never been happier with nothing. Like not, I was only happy if I won something, beat something. Like I had to do something good get money get like oh, you did something everyone thinks you're cool for it and i could live off that for a little bit and then i'd be dark again and i never really understood it but there was an instance where it slapped me in the face a little bit at serious where i had an intern and he was going to get my lunch and he got came back and was like uh i went to get your food and i was like yeah i'm picking up for jason and the guy goes you mean the super angry guy that like sits in the corner all pissed and shit and when he said it, I was like, I don't, I'm not pissed. What, how is that the guy at that restaurant see me like that? Yeah. And I was like, because he, because you look like that, dude. Like you, you walk around. And I was like, I was making a million dollars a year to talk into a microphone. I had everything I wanted. But somehow I was sitting in that cafeteria looking like, like the world was about to get smacked. Like, yeah. And, it, and that was like a little, I was like, well, that's weird that that guy has that opinion, but off I go. Like, and that was, you know, the using thing. I don't, I won't analyze. I won't overanalyze. If it starts to irritate me analyzing it, I'll light another joint. I'll drink another drink. I'll get somebody to blow me, whatever the hell I can get mm -hmm. to, to not face it.
I, I, um, I also am at that point. I'm finally done chasing. Mm. And I do not that I don't have dreams and goals. Still. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's healthy. That's healthy. Oh, but I'm not, I can't feel like I'm chasing something or it or, or you or a person. And I am with you. I am happy and settled in my skin for the first time in, I told him I'm finally, and I've, I've gone to therapy for the first time. Yeah. I'm finally the person that I had been pretending to be my mm, whole life. Wow. That's so, I'm so happy for you, dude. dude that's I, so good. When I said that out loud for the first time, I was like, oh, I've been pretending for a yeah. long time. Because, and, and one of the things that I'm sorry I passed down to you is the is that you feel like you have to be happy Not those uh, legs, or thank God. lift the energy in yeah, the room yeah. when you walk in somewhere. Yeah, you're right. And I feel like I mm. pass that down to him because he saw me no matter what I was outside. As soon as I walked into a room, he probably yeah. saw me like, hey, yeah, me right? Yep. And so I, I see that in you. And it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm bummed because it's an unnecessary pressure that you put on yourself where you sometimes just can't, you don't feel like it's okay. You're like, well, you don't feel it today where you can just sit back in a chair. You always feel like you have to be Jacob. Yep. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I do rec it's weird when I, sometimes I recognize as I've gotten older and healthier, both physically and mentally. But when I, sometimes you look at your kids and you're like, no, that's old me right there. Yeah. Mm. And it's a bummer. But you can't help that you just, you know what I mean? Yeah. I my, see it in my son's temper sometimes. Yeah. Like if he can't do a sport thing correctly, the frustration that immediately turns into he's cursing himself out. And it's like, I'm like, hey, man, hey, hey, come back, come back, look at me. It's not worth it. Yeah. It's not your fault. It's not supposed to happen overnight. Like I'm teaching you like a five punch combination. You're you're not Floyd Mayweather. You don't <laughs> yeah, have 15 yeah. years of boxing under your belt. You just started. What you're doing right now, the mistake you're making, it's pretty good. You know, but don't be so hard on yourself. But that was like, like a part of me is, you know, even my coach, one of my coaches coaches my son. And he's like, dude, sometimes I see his dad because there's times where I've done pad work and I'm like, fuck, what the fuck is fucking moron? And and he's standing there going, dude, who, who are you talking to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. I'm, and yeah. I'm like, well, dude, that's that, that's how, like there was a, in skateboarding, I was scared. There was invert when you do things wrong. Not only do you make it, you don't make it, but you wake up in a hospital. Yeah. So like to get things done, there used to be a technique that I would use where I would get mad. And if I get mad, I am fearless. Okay. So like if I'm trying to trick and it's like, I'll see the landing and I know that it's a 50, 50, sometimes maybe even 70, 30, where I'm like, I probably make that. Yeah. But if I don't make it, I'll probably break my arm. Yeah. And I'm scared. I don't want to break my arm. Yeah. That hurts. I've been to the hospital. It's bad. And I'm like, <laughs> fucking pussy. And I'm walking up the deck. I'm like, give me a fucking, I swear, fuck you motherfucker. And then, and then I drop in with a vengeance and I, I'm like, break my arm, bitch. You know what I mean? And then I make it. But that's every time that it's, I've made it, I'm like, I've got it figured out. Get crazy, get psycho. And then from many encounters where that did not work, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you get it, you pussy. And then I'm like, well, boom. And I'm like, oh, oh no. I broke my arm again. And I'm like, right. <laughs> Maybe, maybe there's another way, yeah. you know, and yeah. then, and then having other wiser, better skateboarders going, man, you know, if you turn your shoulder you know, and I'm like, oh, technique, not I, just anger, not yeah, just, yeah, yeah. not just pure violence, the, the correct way you, to do things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do do you, cause you've changed over the last couple of years. Were you a different parent pre-change? Yeah. Have you? Yep. Really? Yeah. Unfortunately. Were you? Um, I've, I've had to apologize for that too. But you know what, dude? Apologies is a very strong move. Yeah. It's a very- I'm just happy that they understand and have accepted my apology because they don't have to. I yeah. don't deserve it, but they have done that. Well, I will say- That's amazing. Coming from yeah. the kid's standpoint though, like 
it's sometimes it's some things that we don't really even notice, or even if we do, it's nothing that we like. Some kids choose to hold it against their parents. Others don't because yeah. it's not something that carried on. It's something that just happened. It's not something that, you know, you know, uh, lasted over time and hearing your parent be able to come out, whether it's out of the blue, whether you're talking about something, no matter what it is to hear your parent be able to own up to it right away, straight to your face without you saying something. It almost like, it's like when you said the prom thing, which we've talked about, I think on every podcast today. Yeah. I missed his, I missed his prom for the road. I was still chasing. Oh, and it's I, I held on to it for a but, long time. But you apologized for it, yeah, dude. yeah, on the podcast. Right. And like, and he's like, I feel a lot of guilt for that. And I was like, dude, not even something I've ever thought about. Like, yeah, I, but, I, but, I, but, but I, do you not feel the love that he hasn't no, stopped thinking about it? No, and that's I, that, all I get from a hundred percent. And that's why I was like, I appreciate that, dude. Like, yeah. I really do. Like, and like. But just know, like, yeah, you you were out of town, but when you were in town, you were here. Right. A hundred percent. There was nothing else going on except what am I doing at home with my family? Right. Which is and, and really is what important. matters. I was like, go chase your thing. You've always wanted to do this. We always knew that. Right. And you chased it a hundred percent, but you also gave a hundred percent when you came back. Yeah. That's why the small things like that have never really Dude, notched big, me. Also because my mom was there for fucking everything. Sure. My mom held the fucking fort down That's for cool. ten years. That's very so cool. like shout out mom. Yeah. So the like, biggest one recently is I'm not educated. Like uh, bedtime stories. By the time my kids got to about six, I made up stories. I didn't read a book because I can't read. I learned to read by having a show on Sirius where I had to do reads. And I how old were you? Forty. I used to be sponsored. I used to go to a skate park, Mike McGill Skate Park, and I was sponsored by Planet Earth. And I used to wear a Planet Earth T-shirt so that I could look at it while nobody was looking and spell Planet Earth because you had to write down your sponsor to get in for free. I used to cash checks and put on a wrist guard because I can't spell 500 or 1,000. So I would just say, well, my wrist doesn't work. Can you do it for me? No that's, that's how I got around. Shit. And then the serious show got me to force me and then because i was so cocky i couldn't read and people were like is he seriously reading like that like is that for real like it's funny yeah please do that again i love it when jason does a live read because i would guess what the word is and and not say the correct word and and tully would go dude that's not that's that's not what that word is and i'm like ah okay and then i keep going and then i got better and better and then, <laughs> you know what you could have told so people. To you know what you could have told people is that I learned the Australian alphabet. Yeah, yeah. And people in America would have been like, "Well, see, he could have worked." The, yeah, yeah. Maybe not now because of YouTube, but Probably, it could have yeah. worked at one point. But uh, my kids' schooling, like my their mother handles that. And recently, my 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 son has struggled a little bit. He had bullies and things like that, mainly because of me, because they found out about uh, mm-hmm. his father being bi and all that stuff. So that was like, I took that personally. Like I was, it's not his fault and he's paying a price for me being that. So that was really hard for me. But when it comes to schooling, it's sort of like, if you're out of line, I'm like, Hey man, get your shit together. You know, like, what are we fucking doing here? I'm not paying money for your bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's how I used to be. And this recent phase where he was doing this, and it's always been a struggle for him, but I was like, well, what's really going on? You know, like, is, is are there people like, is it are the teachers like being, are they understanding? He's like, so one teacher's got it in for me. You know, and I was like, look, dude, maybe, I don't know for sure if she does or not, but maybe she, let's say she does. Like she is the teacher. You can't get another teacher. Just suck it up. You know, like if she's being mean to you, like, and she, if she is pointing you out and it's unfair, this is life. Sometimes you're going to have people that are in your life that are picking on you and making your life difficult and you didn't deserve it. But there's ways to go around it. Like just making her life even harder, which is making your life harder again. That's not a solution. Like if you could take it, be nice, be over the top, be extra focused when she's around so she doesn't have a reason to get mad at you. Mm -hmm. Try that. You never know. And then the teacher reached out to me and they never contact me. They contact her because they know I'm a big dumb animal and there's no point. Now they were. They said when when it, when he was out of line, and they bring up that they're going to call the father. They noticed that they got a different reaction from it, and felt it was necessary to call me. And I was like, really? 
Now I start talking to the teacher. Then I start talking to the principal. Now I know their names and they know me and they called me. So then I started That's talking awesome. to them on the phone while he's there. And then like I'm doing this with him. We're going boxing together. I never got mad. I never was, because it used to be, my father would be like, the fuck, you little weak cunt, like fucking snap out of it. Don't talk bad about yourself. So it was just always, it never made any sense where yeah. I was like, you just said I was a piece of shit. Yeah. Well, if I say I'm a piece of shit, I'm in trouble for it. But like, where do you think I got that from? Mm -hmm. So this different angle that I use because of my sobriety and because I'm like, that wouldn't work. Like now I know that like, you can't talk to someone like that. That's not how that works. He got a, a, uh, end of the year grant for the most improved student and got like 500 bucks to like spend money on some other stuff that's amazing and awesome. that's me like yeah. i helped that that was all i'm getting all the victories i've ever had in my life that's so far right now the mo the i've never felt more victorious about anything in my entire life still to this day that like i can't believe that my uneducated ass helped him get a better education, even if it's just one thing, one time. It, but it had nothing to do with your education, dude. It had some, everything to do with your humanity Yeah. in mm -hmm. that you went from being somebody who talked <laughs> at somebody yeah. to somebody who talked with them. And that's the- It was a real eye opener. That's amazing, dude. Yeah. That is so fucking amazing because people who, and there are people who parent like that, and I, I know some of them and they think, well, I'm just, I'm, you know, I don't want to be too soft on right. them. But what you did wasn't soft. No. Soft would have been, hey, fuck, you know, being permissive and, and being like blaming it on the teacher or right. blame, right? That's soft. You're letting your kid, you were providing a safe space for opportunities to how are we gonna, best going to get through this. Yeah. And that's not soft. That's like how you communicate with yeah, other humans. Absolutely. Yeah, really. That was, like I said, coolest thing that's ever happened to me in my life. I would have called you a pussy. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> way too funny, all right? <laughs> You're being way too funny about that, you asshole. <laughs> Laugh hysterically at it. The, I, listen, it, my favorite thing is that is the way that we've always communicated. And all my kids, I, I don't want to just say with Jacob, all of my kids, I think, feel very free saying, talking. They I know bet. that my initial reaction is never going to be judgment or anger. Right. Because that, honestly, <laughs> however, sometime it might turn into stand-up comedy. It does turn into stand-up if you bring your problems to me. That's cool. Which is what happened for the last 10 years. I mean, you're a comedian. Yeah. yeah. Get with it, baby. Hey, you know what? Everybody has to eat, you know? That's right. <laughs> I'm actually, I was the, I'm the indirect breadwinner of the family. I'm the reason we had food on the table when Ooh. I was a kid. For, for a couple of years, you were. I mean, yeah. every joke I did was about him. Nice. I'll take it. Yeah. You should, uh, nice Absolutely. Work, dude. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do, do your kids know how you grew up? Uh, a little bit, yeah. Like bits not, and pieces. Not, yeah. not everything, but yeah, bits and pieces. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. My daughter's 19, so she's got a pretty good idea. Is your mom still alive? Yeah. And do your you, your kids have a relationship with them? Yeah. With her? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. She came here recently, stayed at my house. And my daughter took her to dinner. And my son texted her a few times. Like, they reached out by themselves and were nice. Um, they, she went away with my ex. And, they're, like, my kids and her mother and my mom went to their vacation home, spent some time together. So, yeah, well, it's... It's a weird thing because it's. I, I love my mom. There's a lot of things that happen, a lot of mistakes. She's always apologetic to. It. It's like a weird thing where she's just mainly saying sorry, and I'm like, I'm fine. Like it's okay. And she was also here, like in the middle of like some tough stuff. And she's like, I wish I could help. And I'm like, I'm gonna be okay, mom. It's like, it's a thing I'm gonna have to go through. Like, mm -hmm. I'm I'm sober. You know what I mean? I'm doing the work. So. Mm -hmm. Like if according to all these other sober people, if you keep doing the work, it does turn around. It's just unfortunate that it didn't really turn around until she left. Cause now she'd be probably a, a little bit more relieved because she is a little worried about me. I halfway across the world, I can't imagine she wouldn't be. She's right. still in, she's still in Melbourne or Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so my my stepmom came with my brother. It was my other brother passed away. So I've only got one brother. And he came with his three kids and his wife. 
and my stepmom, and they all stayed in my house for two weeks. And then they left on a Sunday, and my mum came on a Monday. Whoa. And I'm, I'm, I've just learned how to like be uh, self sufficient because I, that might that's my other thing. I would I would get uh, wives and girlfriends to be my mummy because mm. I didn't have any family. Mm. So and I, I literate like so it's like I'm I got this thing where it's like you take care of me, and and I'm gonna piss you off until and drive you insane. That's like and then until it's a tough deal to get until into. you leave. So. Being self-sufficient, I got five dogs, a cat, and a dragon, and it just sort of became. Not only was it, uh, did I figure out how to do it, I started to enjoy it. Yeah, I started to like, I clean up and I like it. Like I like to get home and clean my house, and I'm, every now and then I go, "Are you having fun right now? <laughs> what <laughs> happened hey, to you?" One of my favorite things is getting high and cleaning the kitchen. Can I? I love to leave that bit in, but I do like to clean the kitchen. The, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the your the hair of this cat kind of fell in love with me. Yesterday. He's a great guy. Dude, I, he I didn't move off your lap. I didn't know I was going to have so much fun rubbing a hairless cat. He's a magical guy. It. I was just like, this feels so much better than I thought it was yep. going to be. No stubble. It's just magic. Smooth. What was his name? Rumblebean. Rumblebean. What a great name. What are you great, laughing at? Yeah, Rumblebean <laughs> is a great name. My cat's name is Vincent. Okay. That it, by the way, that's a human, old human. By the way, name. that is <laughs> that's a seven. That old. is the two opposite ends of the spectrum of of Vincent uh, and Rumblebean of, of, of pet owners. Yeah, Rumblebean, which is what you would name a pet, and Vincent, yeah, which I is that, what you. It's, it's like, cute it's like, to name your dog a, a human's name. I if I was gonna name cute. a if I was gonna name a pet a human name, it would be Kevin. Because I just feel like yelling the name Kevin is super funny. He's like Kevin. I love get screaming. Over here. Get inside, Kevin. Yeah, I don't it know why work. Kevin makes me laugh. I forgot to ask you. Before we moved off your childhood, tell me something that you did as a kid that you're like, I can't believe, because we all probably have, I can't believe I'm alive stories. Okay. Well, uh, I used to hunt. I don't hunt anymore. There was a time where I came back from America and I went rabbit hunting with my brothers and something changed after I killed the rabbit and picked it up that I was like, oh, I no longer want to do this to anybody. I don't care if you, obviously I eat anything I ever killed when I was a kid, but when I was younger and hanging out with that Czechoslovakian guy, he mm -hmm. became like a bit of an uncle to me, like taught me how to survive in the bush and all that kind of stuff. We used to go pig hunting and there was, in Australia there's razorbacks. So they're like real big, they got like tusks. Hogs. Like hogs. Like yeah, the but they got like big tusks yeah, on them and yeah, stuff. Yeah. They're like big bastards. Like one on one, they will fuck you up. You will yeah. lose you, unless you have a gun. You, how heavy? Or how how are they? Like big, big? Like this high? Whoa! Yeah, they're With like a they're, mohawk on their back and big tusks like this long. Okay, they're probably yeah. but what like between three hundred and four hundred pounds, maybe more. Yeah, probably more. Yeah, yeah they're ginormous. I mean, there's smaller ones as well, but the bigger ones are that they're 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 like a lion, like they're big. Oh yeah. shit! You're gonna but, lose. Uh, you know, they were, my dad was real into it for a minute there. And we even had like a, we welded a, a tractor seat on the bull bar. What, what we call them rhubars. What do you call it? Like the bumper that you, if you hit a cow, the bumper, if you like hit a cow, the metal bumper you put on the front of your car, the fender. No, no like oh. it's a metal frame. Oh, a grill? Oh, a the, grill. Over the grill. So if you hit a cow, it doesn't break your. Oh, it's, I, I don't know. It's like the, the things on Mad Max. No, yeah, kind of, but like, <laughs> yeah. no, you, know, you know, like on the front of the cop cars, they have that little extra. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, like, well, in, in Australia, a lot of four wheel drives have a big one on the front because yeah. they hit kangaroos and the kangaroo will go through the engine, and wreck the car. So in Australia, they have big metal, like, shaped things to protect the front end of the car. So. Based dad, on your face, do you know how big kangaroos are? I, I guess I don't. Okay, okay. Well, there's I different, can tell, I can there's tell different like his face. sizes, but there's seven footers. Red kangaroos are seven foot tall. And just Holy. veins on their fore on their like, biceps, dude, actual and their muscles. back legs are twenty five times the size of their biceps. They stand on their tail and, and they hoof you in the stomach and, and pull crush your, whole your sternum. Out. Yeah, wait, they they could kill a human man. Oh yeah, they like all the videos you see with people unboxing a kangaroo. Yeah. that's a baby. Yeah, that's a toddler, dude. A red kangaroo. I've been scared with a gun in my hand of a red kangaroo. 
Come on, man. It's a dude, fucking they'll, horse they'll, rat, yeah, dude. They'll just sit back on that tail, load up, and go. I mean, they don't you do it. The That's world. the other thing. Like, if you, if you come at one, they'll do it. Yeah. But nobody comes at a red kangaroo. That's ridiculous. Also, I, yeah. They also Trojans. don't charge you. Like, nobody's like, look out here they come. They don't, they don't come <laughs> <laughs> As much as I used to tell girls that to try yeah. and get laid, they yeah. never did that. <laughs> Can but, you also said one more? I'm so sorry to cut you off. We said one more argument for him. He thinks he could beat a bighorn sheep in a fight. Yeah. I think so. What? What's the sheep gonna do? A big that? horn sheep with a ram, like the fucking. Yeah, but you get a hold of the ram and just twist his neck. That's what I down. get on That's the back. That's not what you said. You said you would jump I over would jump him, jump over it, and I would grab it on the back and Ooh, ride it out. That's a risky move. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> jump all the way over. <laughs> Can you dunk? No. Well, then maybe don't do that. <laughs> Point, Jacob. Okay. All right. That's a All right. big jump. All right, so you're hunting. Okay, so yeah, we used to kill boar and yeah, so the tractor seat was welded on the bull bar. So we'd have a little seat belt and we'd go spotlighting. So you have big spotlights, find them, shoot them and eat them. So we had a campfire one night and we'd been hunting and this Czech guy knew a lot more than anybody else. And there was like an earthquake feeling. We don't have earthquakes in Australia. And Jeff goes, get up in the fucking tree. And I'm like, why? And he's like, they're, 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 they're coming. I'm like, who's coming? And he's like, Razorbacks. And I'm like, really? And everyone starts getting up in the tree. And I'm like, all right, I get up in the tree and I got my shotgun. My, my father made me a shotgun with a sawn off handle and a sawn off nozzle so that I could hold it up and aim it because it was too heavy. How old were you? Probably 12 or something. Okay. Pump action. So Yuck. I'm up in the tree and these fucking pigs go flying through the fire. Like, like 20, 30 of them through the fire, like through it and just exploded everywhere, running past it, but some run through it. Big, giant bastards. And my friend Jeff jumps out of the tree after they go by and starts shooting at them. So I drop out of the tree, start shooting at them. I hit one in the back of the head and it goes skids on the ground and goes ree, 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 and gets up and starts running at me no and i'm like what the f and i'm and i'm out and i gotta put two in and i put two in like and, then, and i'm like boom boom and the second one drops him goes down again he's probably like i don't know it felt to me it felt like 20 but more like probably 50 but and they were solids too, not spray. So you had to like really hit them. Oh, they were be, oh they were slug they were slug rounds. They weren't a, big, uh, like a lead ball. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Spray ones like hits a lot of stuff. Right. I was using these lead ones because the spray just like pisses them off. And it's not gonna do anything. It'll do something, uh, but, but you'd but have to hit it from real horse range. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I dropped him, uh, and like you know I really thought I was gonna die for a second. The pig dogs that we had had these big collars on, big leather collars with all these studs on it. And it goes up to it and it woke, it like got up for a second and its its tusk went under the dog's collar because it tried to like stab the dog in the neck, but it missed the jugular and went into the collar and snapped the collar and rag dog this. And it's like American pit bull sized dog, like big pig dog. Things like 20 foot catapulted, like, like just flinging off. The collar snap, and then boom, 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 shot the pig. So kill the pig, and then they're like, right, Jay, you got to gut it. You mean it's your kill. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, I don't know. So they hung it up by its back legs on a tree, mm -hmm. and they gave me a meat cleaver. And they're like, you know, you get into his guts. You know what I mean? So I cut him into the guts, put my hands in. I got to pour all the stomach out. And they're, you know, they're all laughing at me because I'm like, ew. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's yeah, guts yeah. on me. And they go, all right, you got to cut his head off. So now I'm swinging with this meat cleaver on this giant boar's head for ages because it's like, it's super, it's like- And you're 12. Yeah, so it's yeah, taking yeah. a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I finally get the head off and then Jeff's like, put the head on your head for a photo. So I put the boar's head on my head for a, with, the, with the gun and they took a photo. <sighs> the, it's very Game, so back very at game that, of Thrones-esque. That was-, that was that was unnecessary. Yeah, it's, yeah, dude. 12. Yeah. Or drunk shooting. Once again, with the shotgun, we got a, a, a clay pigeon machine. 
Paul. And we had this little four-wheel drive car. It's called a halflinger. It's Czechoslovakia. And this guy yeah. told my dad about all this, <laughs> this stuff. This guy's in a lot of these. I like a, this guy. There's a halflinger and it had fully locking diffs that you could do in the car. So it's a four-wheel drive, but then you can lock the diffs. So no matter what, all four wheels turn. And then there's the big version, six wheels called a Pinsgauer. Mm-hmm. And it's six-wheel drive where all li- locking diffs. So it would go fucking anywhere. But dad had the little one and we put the clay pigeon... We bolted it on by shooting the roof and putting the bolts through the co- so the clay pigeons on the roof, and then we're shooting them drunk as skunks. Everybody's wasted. How old are you? Like 15, 16. How maybe? old were you when you started drinking? 11. Not all that, not like, yeah. just I was just like, Jake, easy on the beers, mate. And I'd be like, all right, and then I'd sneak off and get another one. So I'm wasted. And I'm shooting these clay pigeons like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, you know, and everyone's like, hey, you know, like cheering for me. So I'm getting pretty pumped up. And then there's a butterfly that flies by. And it's like, kill a fucking butterfly. And I'm like, poof, and, the, you know, and I'm like, I'm like, yeah. Like, I'll fucking kill anything. You know I mean? Everyone's like, Jay, I'll kill anything. And because I'm drunk. I test to see if there's another bullet in the gun by pulling the trigger, holding it like this. No. And it goes, boom. And I grab my ear because it just goes like deaf. But I thought I shot my ear off. And everyone's all quiet. And I'm like, "Uh, no blood. No blood. (laughs) (laughs) Back to drinking. Yeah, that doesn't sound like your childhood, does it? Uh, Nothing like yeah. it. No, no, dude. No. I mean, I did hunt when I was a kid. I did duck hunting. That that That's at cool. twelve, yeah, dude, fun. is bananas yeah. to me. Oh my god! Yeah, there was god. a lot of stuff that drink driving. My dad was in it. Had a Corvette with nitrous oxide, a joint in a hand, and in a, in a beer. And he goes, "Jay, do as I say, not as I do." Got it? And I was like, "Got it." Like, if I ever get the money to get a nitrous oxide Corvette, I'm getting it. <laughs> Can I tell you, and I and I say this in my act, that what most people over the age of 40, one of the big differences between being a kid now and being a kid then, most people over the age of the 40, over the age of 40, when they were a kid, you know what they never heard an adult say? Hey, don't do that in front of them. It'll fuck them up later. Yeah. Because they didn't know. No. no. They, That's the thing. They, they didn't know. They just did shit in did, front of even, us. Even skateboard concussions. Like there was... There was a time where I got knocked out and I woke up. I was telling it on Hawk vs. Wolf today where I I got knocked out, shattered my wrist, and the medic's like, you got to go to the hospital. And I was like, I got one more ride left. Get the fuck off me. And I grabbed duct tape and just screamed and ripped grip, grip tape, I mean, duct tape around my hand to try to hold it still. And then I got back on the ramp and I was pacing, waiting for my ride. There, there was an ESPN X Games qualifier. There was all kinds of people there that were supposed to be. That's crazy. Nobody said, "Hey, man, you were just snoring." Like, yeah, no, no more to you. No, not one person said. I told Tony today there was one other skater that saw me on the deck and went, because he was like, <laughs> "You're fucking badass right now, dude." Because you're because you're up here after being knocked out and your arm is clearly snapped in half. But nobody was like, "Hey, man, you've got a concussion." Like the first time I ever heard that. When I got knocked out in Australia, I was in and out of concussion, like I was in and out of consciousness. And I woke up in a hospital and I pissed my pants and a nurse was wiping my package down with a wet towel. And I, I guess I'd been awake a few times, but I'd gone back out again. So, but I don't know. This is the only bit that I remember is like, I'm in a, in a hospital and I'm like, whoa, hey. And then my brother walks in. I'm like, hey, it's not cheating if you've been knocked out. And we made a joke about it. And then the doctor said, uh, don't skateboard for at least two weeks. If you hit your head, you could die. And I was like, die? From what? Yeah. He's like, dude, you've got a major concussion. Your head is like, it's got swelling in swelling. it. And it's like, you can't hit it again. And I was like, oh, Shit. And then I was in Mexico City in a mega ramp contest two weeks later. It, yeah, yeah, there was say, nobody. He did say two weeks. So, I mean. Right. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. follow the rules. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I For was sure. pretty nervous. Yeah. yeah. The th- with, the, with death hanging over you? A little bit. I, um, I want to ask you a couple questions that we ask everybody. Um, 
what do you hope your kids get from you? And what do you hope they don't? <laughs> this is gonna this is sad, man. Uh I hope they don't get the gay. I don't think they do. I think they're okay. And I don't mean that bad about gay people. I just know it's hard. Yeah. It's not. Mm -hmm. I don't wish it. This 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 world doesn't get it. And then and they treat people so unfairly. So mainly my son because my daughter being bi would not be that bad for her life. Yeah. But for my son, I hope that he doesn't have that. I'm pretty sure he doesn't. I think I I'm pretty good at gay does and I think he has that. Um and my temper. It's unnecessary. So those are the two things that what I What do you hope they do get from you, dude? My drive and my passion. Yeah. My passion for for never giving up and and my passion for life. Like when I get into something, I feel like sometimes I love things so much that I feel sorry for other people because you don't understand what it's like to have something mean so much to you and then master it or be involved in a, in a point where you're in a, in a, like, in a, like in ecstasy. It's like a flow state. Yeah. No. Like, like the, like I just told, I just interviewed this skater kid. That's like this new kid. That's he's just out of this world, man. He just lives on another planet and he was like this contest where he was qualifying for the Olympics and he tore his meniscus and he was like, they don't have time to t bandage you. If you take, if you bandage up, we're kicking, we're, we're, we're cutting you from the, from making the finals. And he said he dropped in and was like, I couldn't see. It was just like the matrix because it, and I know I understood what he was saying. Cause I was like, you no, you didn't, but to you black out on it. This means so much. You've been preparing for this for so long you will like i've said to myself i would rather die than fall off in this next 45 second ride and i meant it and then i made my ride but even if i don't make my ride because that's happened too to have that passion like the the bit before the bit after even the bad like where it goes bad to care like to mm -hmm. care that much it's just like it's such a gift to I, care that much i feel that way with stand-up yeah. i i I have never in my life cheated the people in front of me, whether there are six people there yeah. or 6,000. Yeah. If there are six people there, it's not their fault. There's nobody else there. Yeah. Why am I going to, they, it, it's never been lost on me that they left their house and I'm going to give them the best Dude, fucking show I can. I went to that open mic last night because a fan DM me and said, are you doing any shows tonight? And I was like, yeah. Dude, that's awesome. And he watched and I tried as hard as I could. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to ask? <laughs> I would say, I, I asked everybody this, what would be your best parenting advice for parent, people who are parents, new parents, uh, people who aren't parents yet? Um, just, it's vague, but however you would like to answer. Uh, I mean, just love and understanding, man. Like try to see what it's, try to understand what it's like to be in their shoes just because they're your blood doesn't mean they're you, you know, what's it like to grow up around you and all the other things that you know, they've grown up around and not to get frustrated, you know, and all not to worry mm. like life is going to happen, you know? And mm. it's like, I my worry, like, Oh, don't get hurt. Don't stay out late. Don't hang out with that guy. Don't hang out. It's like, it's, it's unnecessary. They're going to do what they're going to do. Right. Just let, as long as they know that you love them and you'll do anything for them, I think you're a good parent. I actually a think answer. you're a hundred because look, man, I, I truly believe that almost every good thing you instill. So say you go, my kid, I've structured them. They know how to get, they can go to school, then they do piano and they, and the, that's great. But the negative to that is if it gets bumped off track, now you have to be spontaneous. They may not be good at that. Right. Right. So everything has an opposite. But the only thing that doesn't have an opposite are those two things that you just said. Right. Which is. Because they know they got that in the in the back pocket. That's right. It instills a confidence. 
my, you know, my dad was not an emotional dude growing up when I was growing up. I, I don't think he really started saying I love you until his dad died. Right. But man, um, I think we get better as we evolve. Uh, all I of agree. Us, most of us, because it was we, so not unheard of for your dad not to tell you that he loved you. No, dude. It of was course. Like, and now it'd be like, what do you mean you've never told your children you love them? Yeah. Or, or even the look that would have been in my household if my father had said, "Hey, I love you guys." Yeah, like the whole house would have gone, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> like even I would have said, what are you, gay or some shit? <laughs> <laughs> I think dad had a stroke. Yeah, I, my, my stepmom told me once that when the dog got old and got put down that he cried and I was already like in my 40s. Yeah. And I was like, bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> what? How? When? How did it go? <laughs> Was there a tear? <laughs> yeah. How many? <laughs> like I could not. I wanted to be there. I wanted her to tell me the story, like make a movie out of it. How? I don't believe you. Because I know I saw that guy break stuff and like stay, like go camping, and he one time he broke, he crashed his dirt bike racing somebody, went over the bars and hit a tree and snapped his shoulder to the point where his shoulder dropped down here, mm. and he comes back takes his helmet off with one hand. His face is white. And he's like, oh, yeah, I think I broke my shoulder. And I'm like, think. <laughs> Dude, it's hanging off. <laughs> yeah. Like, every arm doesn't work, so that's probably got something to do with it. I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, my brother and I are just like, how is he standing up, you know? And then my stepmom is like, you know, so we packing up. He's like, we just got here. Like, let the kids have a good weekend. And he just drank and hung out. All weekend. Wait, and then for real? His shoulder hanging off the entire we weekend? We ate. We had barbecues. We slept two nights. And then Sunday, drove back. He took the bikes off the trailer. And then took the trailer off the car. And then drove himself to the hospital. And then he came back. He's like, yeah, separated and broken. Didn't know that. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> well, we were just like, yeah, that is, who is this dude? Like, that's not your dad. I was like. No, I'd have been like, ha, 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 because no, you would have passed out. Maybe not. I might have been passed out from the pain. You think I pass out from pain from a broken and completely separated shoulder? If you would have looked down and seen your shoulder, Dude, not where this it was shoulder's a been dislocated like eight times. <laughs> What are you talking God, Dad, about? Yeah, you don't know where you've been, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. This, I almost lost three toes. This, yeah, those three and toes. I didn't pass out. Me. Look, I'm. How did you? Look? Uh, these. Uh, you know the like white box trucks with the black lift on the back, the like furniture trucks. Yeah. So I worked TV production. It was my very first job, and I was on the back of it loading the truck up. We were loading out the house, and somebody brought the gate up, and I didn't notice that my foot was hanging over the edge of the gate. So as it came up and connected to the back of the truck, my toes were right there, and it just crushed my toes. I can show you if you want. But well, there's a dirty scar. There's well, dirty, the, dirty scar. All you, my all toes, three are, toes are. One looks like the Slender Man on from oh, the internet. Wow. Yeah, oh, all, I uh, named them. I named them. Yeah, yeah. So because they were that janked up. They are. They are still that janked up. Permanent. Forever. I have permanent nerve damage in all three of them. Respect. Yeah, yeah they're fucked. I love yeah, that. one's the brain. One is Slender Man, and one is uh, Quasimodo because he's got a little hump on him. <laughs> 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 uh, dude. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, here. thank you. Yeah, man. I mean, that was great. Oh, Love you too, man. It was so much fun. It's so cool to be in front of somebody who's so open and honest and vulnerable. Mm. It's so, it's super cool, man. I'm I don't know how to do it any other way. Yeah. So. It's the, honestly, in my opinion, it's the best way to do it. Yeah. I'm, 100%. I, I, and I'm psyched for you and where you are in your life, man. So am so I, man. I would have, like, six months ago, I would have been like, thank you. Uh, it, you have no idea, but from the recent work and just like, I feel like the sun is shining again. Awesome. And all the pain that I, that I went through and, and stayed in the pocket for, I'm, I've never been happier. I'm glad it happened. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm glad all that stuff happened because it makes me more resilient and more like, I'm just so grateful Yeah, me too. for like every thing that happens that is just the day, you know? That's fucking awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Well, congratulations to you, man. And thank Thanks. you so much for coming on here. Tell tell them where you tell everybody where they can go find all your stuff. Uh thejasonellis.com is the website for tour dates and all that stuff, which still sounds so 
fucking weird. Awesome. Because I do have two dates. You can see me do comedy, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, at Wolfmate on Instagram and uh, fathergrind.com is my skateboard company. And it has, I have a video on how to learn how to skateboard if you're older in a way where you can do it and not go to hospital. So it's not about doing kickflips and only impossible. It's about skateboarding, wearing your pads, having a good time. That sounds pretty awesome. All right. Uh, I'll plug both of us. Okay. So. Sounds good. Um, Comedianjoshua.com for tortoise and tickets. I don't know when this one's coming out. So whenever it comes out, go on the website. We're going to be all over the country during the summer. In the fall, we're doing like four weekends where we're in five different cities in five different days, yep. which is going to be ridiculous. So come find us. We're going to have a great time. Uh, Joshua Comedy on all platforms. Uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Also, before we go anywhere, I never try to fangirl out, but I will say I... I I had known about you for a long time. I knew the Guinness World Record you held that day. Oh, away, bro. Yeah. Like, I was a big like X Games skateboard lover back when I was a young kid. So That's I have bullshit absolutely... that world record. You know that, right? That yours or the one that he that he, that he broke it. Well, the, the he broke it. He, it was his. They offered him ten thousand dollars. He was like, "Fuck off, ten thousand dollars." And they were like, "Do you know anybody that will do it for ten thousand dollars?" He was like, "Yeah." <laughs> and then he called me. He's like, "Alice, do you want to get ten grand for jumping off something?" I was like, "Hell yeah, I do!" <laughs> and then I jumped off it. And, and then, then he and decided then, to do then, it. And then then he did another one way bigger with a way bigger ramp, and destroyed me. Because he's better. I'm okay with it. Didn't, didn't Danny he, Way's a better skateboarder. Didn't Danny than Danny Way also I. almost die on one of those? Wasn't he the well, guy this, that this he is, went all the way up and then just? This is the game, baby. Yeah. If you want, if you want to beat me, you better, you better, of, better know you're, going, you're of, potentially going to die. Dude, that that Danny Way wipeout is one of the craziest things I've ever seen live. Beside the point. But yeah, man, big fan. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, um, and as always. Do something nice for someone today. Tell somebody you love them. We'll see you next week. Love you. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.